Pugnacia is a crazy overhaul mod for Ark Survival Evolved, and I'm gonna spend 100 days in this crazy mod and attempt to beat the final boss by the end of it. So I spawned on a random beach on the center in the morning of day one to instantly be killed by a conflagrant dodo. I was adjusting my sound settings. Besides its weird name, it was level 812, so I already knew I was in some trouble. Anyways, after spawning in again, I noticed that there were some unbreakable stone tools in my inventory, and you may notice my character looks like a used tampon. Yeah, that's kind of just something you can do with Pugnacia, you can make your character whatever color you want. Oh hell no. Nah. Anyway, I need to get to work if I want to defeat the crazy bosses at the end of this playthrough. And I don't actually know what these bosses are. I honestly don't know too much about this mod, so the whole thing is going to be a giant learning experience for me, full of trial and error. But what I do know is, I can passively tame some dinos with mayho berries. So after farming a few mayho berries, I saw a bright green moss shops that had just killed a sarco, but taming it was out of the question since it only went up 0.2% tame effectiveness each feed. So instead, I started to try and level up so I can passive tame some better dinos like a trike. And that entailed me smacking some rocks, picking bushes, and hitting trees to start crafting foundations and eventually cooking pots because they give good experience. And I got myself to around level 14 by the end of day one. I started taming a turtle on the morning of day two, but stopped after only feeding it a few times because I realized that they're kind of butt cheeks. So instead, I ran up to a trike to try and tame it, but I saw I needed to be level 20 to feed it. So I need to get back to the cooking pot grind. But first, I found myself some crystal when I ventured up the mountain that there was on the island. So I crafted myself an awesome spyglass with it. And then I got to making a whole lot of cooking pots. And I finished my insane cooking pot grind about 5 minutes later at level nice. 22. So I made my way back down the mountain and started taming this yellow level 252 trike. Now you might think that level 252 is insane, but the dino levels get way higher. If you remember the dodo that killed me on day 1, it was like level 800 something. Anyway, after a few minutes of feeding it, it tamed, and I traveled back up the mountain to try and get a few more crystals to turn into dino balls. I wanted to put the trike into a dino ball so I could keep it safe until I got it a saddle. But while I was trying to get the crystal, I got dropped by some titan drones. Yeah, not my proudest death. Anyway, I made my way back and got my stuff. And I also managed to harvest a body that my trike killed, and I crafted its saddle. And after that, I learned some more ingrams before riding my trike down to the beaches of the island, looking for more trikes to tame so I can have a squad of them, because they're actually really strong. But I ended off the day opening a blue drop, which had some cayenne armor in it and some kibble. I was still traveling down the beach looking for more trikes on the morning of day three. And it wasn't going good until I found a level 840. Yeah, I need that. But while I was taming it, I also stumbled across an orange level 560 trike, which I also wanted. And these dudes took about half the day to tame for me because they would sporadically get in fights with other dinos, but they'd also win because of how high level they were. But right I was about to finally finish taming the trikes, I spotted my mortal enemy. Oh, hell no. Those things are back. If you're an OG fan of the channel, you might remember some of these from my most popular video almost two years ago. I died from these turkeys so many times in that video. And I made sure to eat four whole turkeys the next Thanksgiving to get back at them for my pain. Anyway, meet Bumblebee, Megatron, and Cheeto, my three trikes. And I also managed to craft all three of these dudes' saddles since they were all killing machines. The level 1200 most of all. But after that, I finally left the island and swam to the mainland. Bumblebee nearly died on the swim over, but all three managed to make it. And at the end of the day, I took down a giant Megachalon. Day 4 started bright and early with me spotting some Pteranodon. And you can actually pass a tame PT, so of course I want one. And I then found this orange and blue level 532 PT, which only after 3 feeds I tamed. And it came out to almost level 800, but I had to put down some turtles for the keratin to craft the saddle first. But once I did, I made a quick trip to a nearby mountain and then farmed some crystal for dino balls to keep my trike safe. For some reason, Pugnacia spawns about 5 times the normal amount of dinos there normally are, so I want to keep my dinos by my side at all times. But now that I have flight, I want to look for a permanent place to live right off the bat. And my first thought as I'm playing the center is I build on the giant floating island. But as I flew in there, there were simply too many strong dinos for me to take down and clean my area. Well, I wanted to build in here, but... I think it might be a little bit too dangerous to do that. So I flew back towards the mainland and looked around for a little bit for a decent place to live. And I decided to live in this little hole in a mound of dirt off of one of the rivers. Yeah, that was a joke, but seriously, I couldn't really find where I wanted to live. That is, until I got the biggest hit of nostalgia of my life. You see, when I first started playing Ark around four years ago, I built right next to this pillar. And so you could really tell how much of a noob I was, because one, I built right on the beach. And two, I was playing the center in the first place. So I landed and threw out my trike to add some protection, but I was quickly attacked 
attacked by a rogue hippo who was actually insanely strong, so I had to book it. But that's when I decided I'm gonna need some gates to protect me and my tames if I wanna build there. I started the morning of day five off with crafting an S plus fours because I need to craft the smithy to craft the behemoth gates. So after a little grinding, I had the forge and eventually a smithy. And I also crafted myself some metal tools, but I quickly realized that the ramshackle stone tools that I spawned with were actually better since they didn't have any durability. But after that, I crafted myself a pugnacious smithy as well because I want to craft a colossal gate. There isn't much to it, it's just supposed to be bigger than a behemoth gate and it can fit titans through it. But I didn't even get to use my new structures before a hippo found me again. Yeah, once again, not my proudest death. So I needed to take a little break from Ark, so I whipped out my phone and started playing some Dungeon Hunter 6. Dungeon Hunter 6 is the newest installment in the classic hack and slash franchise. Dungeon Hunter 6 is a free to play mobile ARPG game where you play as a bounty hunter slaying bosses and fighting in guild wars with your friends. But let's backtrack to the slaying bosses part real quick. Killing a boss isn't the end of that boss, you can loot, ride them, and fly them. And as well you can summon up to 3 of them at a time for them to join your squad and help you take down your enemies. However, moving away from the bosses. Dungeon Hunter 6 features new creative game elements that have never been seen before. For example, you can turn your character into a cat on stealth missions. Apparently, this is inspired by a real cat that lives with the developers of the game, so yeah, that's kinda awesome. Like, I wish I could turn into a cat. Not my cat, though. He's really fat. Anyway, Dungeon Hunter 6 also features better graphics and a more optimized performance for smoother gameplay and an amazing visual experience. Lastly, Dungeon Hunter 6 has many more features to explore for yourself, like participating in Guild Wars, grinding the skill tree to test builds, and trading items via the auction system. So download Dungeon Hunter 6 today and use my link in the description. Or if you're currently watching my video on your PC, scan the QR code on screen right now for a special starter pack valued at $50. And then once you're in, use your account to enter the Lucky Spin event for free to win great prizes like iPhones, PS5s, and more starting October 15th. And it took me a few minutes to get back to my base. I mean, what was left of it. There was nothing left when I got back to my base, except my pugnacious smithy that survived. Anyway, after that, I threw on my trike and went on another search for a PT because I really liked having access to flight and it didn't take me long to find and tame another level 476 at the end of the day. Well day 6 and it's time to start farming and building this gate so nothing like that happens again. So I farmed some more thatch foundations and a forge and then a smithy and then it's with a heavy heart that I have to announce that I spent the rest of the day and all of day 7 and all of day 8 farming gates. I was farming with stone tools what do you want me to do? But there is one thing you can do for me. You can watch this building montage. Day 9 and my gates are hippo proof, and they were given a free test by this random red hippo that I promptly put down. Anyway, after harvesting the free hide the hippo kindly donated to me, I finished the gates by crafting the actual gate for the colossal gate frame. I swear it's the same size as the behemoth gates, but I guess I have to have one if I want to get any titans in this 100 days. Anyways, after that, I added a few more thatch foundations to hopefully stop trees and rocks from respawning inside my walls. But moving on, I finished my armor set with some primitive flax so I wasn't so squishy anymore. And now, I have I have a PT which is good, but it's really not the greatest. So I set back out and came to level 812. I'm not completely sure what the max level is, but I'm pretty sure these 800s are pretty close to it. I logged back in on day 10 to instantly craft 6 more refining forges because my singular one was not cutting it anymore. And after placing the 6 forges, I realized I don't want to be filling these with metal I farm by hand anymore. So it's time to tame an RG and Ankylio to make my life a lot easier. So I flew out to the floating island to see if I could spot any RGs, and I did, but they were being killed by other dinos. And I didn't even have anything to knock out an RG if I wanted to, so I returned back to my base. And I actually have a few strong Pugnacia Trank arrows, which do a few thousand Torpor a shot, but I realized I don't have a crossbow to shoot them out of. So I made a quick trip over to a meadow node and farmed some before returning back to base and crafting a primitive crossbow. And after that, I left my base towards one of the snow mountains, and I tried knocking out a level 840 arch. To make these Trank arrows, it only takes 250 narco berries and 5 spoiled meat, which is a small price to pay. So anyways, I split some meat in my inventory for it to spoil faster, and then I farmed until I had 19 arrows, which should be more than enough. And I spent the next 10 minutes knocking out the bird, because dinos are super fast in Pugnacia, and I didn't have a trap. And I was also freezing to death, and the RG broke my armor, so it wasn't that great of a combination. But I did manage to knock out the bird on top of a pillar and kill a mammoth for prime meat to tame it. And I set back towards my base at the end of the day, because the RG would take a while to tame. I made my way back to my base in the morning of day 12, and I quickly left once again to farm some metal, because the RG broke 
literally my entire set of armor in one attack. So I got some more metal smelting and I repaired my armor before venturing back to the island I spawned on to kill some more turtles for keratin. I need their keratin to craft the RG saddle. And the turtles are the easiest target because they don't do a lot of damage and they're slow. So anyways, I crafted the saddle and made some campfires to cook me some actual food before setting out to pick up my new RG. But when I arrived, there was no RG. I even checked on the tame tracker and it wasn't there either. So something could have easily killed it, but it was on top of a giant pillar, so I don't know what could have killed it. So anyway, I returned home empty-handed at the end of the day. So to cut it short, I gotta find another RG to knock out and tame. So as you can imagine, day 13 started out with me farming more strong trank arrows with my new trike. And once I finally got done around midday, I set back out to the snow mountains to hopefully find another high level. But after some searching, there were none to be found. Now, it's at this point a thought dawned on me. I don't really know what I'm doing in this mod. Like, I don't really know what the end goal is or what bosses I have to kill. So after doing some quick research by literally just asking natural causes what to do, he said I need a conflagrate spino first of all to start killing stuff. And I found that I can use this pugnacia guide information you spawn with to see the dinos in pugnacia and how to tame them. So taming a new conflagrate spino is now my new goal. And there just so happened to be a swamp right next to the mountain with a level 336 spino in it. It wasn't the best level, but I knocked it out because I just wanted one. Anyway, I went to tame it with some prime meat, but for some reason these dudes cook meat passively in their inventories. So it would cook all the meat in the inventory before it could tame, thus making the tame slow. So after annoying natural causes some more, I found out about the Gorilla Potion that has a horrible name, but it does make dinos hungry so they tame faster. To craft this potion, you need 25 narcotics, 25 stimulants, and 50 spark powders. So with that goal in mind, I got to farming berries and spark powder. And before long, I had my disgusting sounding potion. Anyway, I thought the spino would have actually woken up by now, so I made some more tranks just in case I have to knock out a new one. But it was actually still asleep when I got back, and the potion worked just like it was supposed to, and I now have a conflagrant spino. And when it tames, it actually tames with a saddle, so that's really nice. But anyway, I took my spino on a little rampage in the swamp, and I say little because I nearly got killed because it's actually not that strong. I was getting destroyed by a few zombie dinos, so I went back to my base before I actually lose it. So day 15, I won a stronger conflagrant spino. So this time, I got to making the weird potion again, first this time. But while I was mid-drug crafting, I had to put down a hippo who wanted unauthorized access to my base. Anyway, after finally making the potion, I set back out and found the level 840 spino in the middle of the swamp. It was in a really dangerous area, but I simply cannot pass up on that level. So I began bouncing around the little rocks I could stand on and shoot a trank arrow at it. And it was all going well until I only needed one more trank arrow to knock it. Yeah, that was not part of the plan. But more importantly, I don't have a good way of getting back there. So towards the end of the day, I took my trike back over to the blue obelisk island to kill some more stuff for more keratin to make another PT saddle. I got all that I needed on day 16 and returned to my base. But what do you know, there was a surprise waiting for me there too. A megalosaurus that decided it also wanted into my base, so I had to kill it. But it actually put up a pretty decent fight and I wasn't sure if I'd win or not. Anyway, I won that because I'm him and I set off toward the swamp once again. And also, since I'm him, I managed to tame the spino while avoiding a primal carquinos. They simply yeah. don't really but after that, I went on an actual rampage with the spino because it was putting out some insane damage numbers. The first half of day 17 was spent looking for an ancient rex. I was informed that if I kill an ancient rex with my spino, I could get some instant kibble, which I believe instantly tames any dino. But I did not find any, so I think I need to place the ascension portal that allows bosses to spawn in my world. But I can't even craft it because I don't have any metal. So it's time to finally get to taming an RG that I originally set out to do. So I got back to farming tranks and a trap this time and I'll just cut straight to it. I found a level 784 and knocked it out without it actually being in the trap because for some reason it can't fit inside of it, even though it can in other normal playthroughs. I put some food in the RG in the morning of day 18, but returned home to make another potion of hunger because I'm impatient. And once I finally did make it, I went back to discover my RG was inside the map. I love single player art. This better not be an issue in Ark Survival Ascended or I'm gonna commit a crime. I don't know what yet, but it won't be good. Anyway, I had the ghost into the map to tame it, which I don't like doing, but I'm not losing a tame like that. But anyway, I tamed the RG and did some basic leveling with it before flying out the edge of the map to look for an Anklio to tame at the end of the day. I had a level 532 Anklio knocked out on day 19. And obviously, since they tame on Mayho Berries, I returned to my base and crafted a potion of hunger because I'm on a tight schedule and don't want to lose any time. But when I returned, guess what? My Anklio was inside of the map. This is seriously starting to become a problem. And the Anklio is at the very bottom of the map, and if you didn't know, usually at the bottom of most arc maps there is water so on top of my anklio being in the mesh it was also drowning but that didn't stop me from going into the mesh and using the potion to tame it since the anklio was high level it had enough oxygen to survive the taming process 
Anyway, after that ordeal, I took my Ankylio back to my base and quickly set off again, this time with my Argent Enki to farm some metal. And the combination of this Enki having super high melee and the weight reduction mod I have installed is quite nice. I also have all the mods I'm playing with linked in the description if you want to try this challenge for yourself. And whenever I do play with mods, I always have them linked in the description, so I better not see a single comment asking what mods I'm playing with. Anyway, towards the end of the day, I actually made my way over to the floating island to farm some metal, and I returned to my base to smelt it at the end of the day. Day 20 started with me going crazy on some trees. I was committing this deforestation to fill my forges to keep smelting the insane amount of metal I just farmed. Just kidding, that didn't happen because I crashed. Not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting to crash in this mod, but I guess my PC that costs even more than a car can't save me from ARC being ARC. Anyway, when I logged back in, I was back at the floating island the first time, and I had to go back home to deposit all the metal and refarm all the wood. But now that I have all this metal, I finally made an ascension portal which allows bosses to spawn in my world. But honestly, looking back, this probably wasn't a good idea doing this on day 20, mostly because all the bosses have at least 10 million health. Anyway, to end off the day, I looted a yellow drop with a ring that had an insane long neck inside of it. And this is actually kind of clutch because if I get some good trank darts to use with this, I can basically knock anything out. Day 21, and I'm back looking for an ancient wreck. But the problem is, I don't know where to find these suckers. I was looking around the volcano in the mountains where I thought an ancient wrecks would spawn, but there were none to be found. But after returning to my base and looking into the Pugnacia information guide and seeing there was actually none on the map right now, it made sense I couldn't find any. But that didn't stop me from searching for a few more minutes into the day in hopes one would spawn in. But anyways, after not finding any, I wanted to shift my focus back to the trank darts I was talking about on day 20. Pugnacia has these special trank darts called Strong Pugnacia Trank Darts. I know, it's a really creative name, but anyways, I wanted some of these to knock out a Bronto and then use the Bronto to farm even more of these trank darts since they're pretty expensive. So anyway, I got to work first farming spark powder to turn into gunpowder because you need it for each dart. I then moved on to spoiled me on day 22. I had to put down an iguanodon for it and then split it in my inventory, but its life was a small price to pay. And after that, I got to farming berries with my trike right outside my base. And I think you can see why I want to tame that Bronto. It's really slow and inefficient farming with my trike. But after that, I still had a few minutes until the meat would spoil, so I did some adventuring and looted a good yellow drop, which actually had an insane crossbow in it. And I also spent some time looking for an ancient Rex, but yeah, I didn't find any once again. Oh, and also, it's at this point I discovered I could level an insane amount of movement speed onto my flyer, so that's why my bird is so fast. Oh, oh there's one right there! There's an ancient rex. So yeah, I found an ancient rex and I forgot to do my homework, but we all know Ark is way more important than that. So anyway, I flew out my Conflicker and Spino and found the spot that cheats the fight since the rex actually did a lot of damage and had over 3 million health. And when I finally killed it, I got the instant kill I've been after for what feels like forever. Day 23, I finally started crafting some more strong Pugnacia Trank Darts. And as I said, these suckers are pretty expensive. But once I had a few of them, I went out and knocked out a level 476 Bronto. So I did miss one shot with my trank, which caused me physical pain since they are expensive, but it doesn't matter, I still knocked it out. Ain't no way I just missed. Anyways, I also realized I don't want to wait forever to tame this thing, so I went back to my base real quick and grabbed an instant kibble to tame it. You only get three of these things per ancient rex you kill, so I'm gonna have to be quite conservative with them. But anyway, they work just like they're supposed to, and the Bronto instantly tamed. And once I returned to my base with it, I crafted a saddle and began farming more narco berries with it. And after that, I discovered what? my ascension portal was working because I found my first boss. 43 million health. But what I was really doing was looking for another high level PT to tame. I wanted to breathe the two so I could have an imprint on my main flyer. It probably won't do too much if I get hit by one of those glacial gigas or a boss, but it's always nice to have. I finally found the female level 784 in the morning of day 24. It took a few minutes to tame because it wanted to take a little flight after every time I fed it, but I got it. And I also looted another yellow drop with a ring on the way home and got some more good flak and some kibble. Anyway, when I returned to my base, I bred my PTs and found that I could actually incubate the egg on the edge of my thatch platform where it got just enough heat from the forges. And I named the baby Flyer because I couldn't think of a better name and I spent the rest of the day raising it. Flyer finally finished raising in the morning of day 25. And obviously, I had to take her out to do some leveling by lethal force. But once I finally got her to some decent stats I was happy with, I flew back out to the floating island once again to discover another ancient wreck. I guess this is some sort of hotspot for them to spawn or something. But anyway, there was also a giant boss here, Mothra. Yeah, anyways, I don't want to get in the way of that thing. So I managed to avoid Mothra and successfully took out the ancient wreck 
2x by cheesing it once again in the same exact spot and I got three more instant kibble. But now I think it's time I want to make some upgrades to my base area because the stats platform isn't exactly cutting it anymore. That is until I spotted a level 728 zombie theory which I promptly knocked down and tamed with some instant kibble. And after that I made it saddle and farmed some wood. But I also nearly lost the theory when farming the wood because there's two other theories that decided to jump me but no worries I had it all under control. Yeah that was a joke. I, I seriously nearly lost the theory there. Day 26 started with some good old triangle foundation craft. I wanted to build one of those hexagon platforms I do a lot in my 100 days videos. And there wasn't too much to it for the rest of the day. I finished building the platform and crafted and placing a fabricator. I finished the platform area on day 27 by adding some wooden stairs to and it. And after that I flew out to the iceberg by the green obelisk and brought out the true American in me. It's almost like I was made to farm this oil or element. I'd much prefer element, but I guess I have to kill a boss to get that, and this is much, much easier. But anyways, you might be asking, what am I farming this oil for? So, with all this metal I have, I want an industrial forge, but they're quite expensive. So expensive, in fact, that I have to fly back out to the iceberg to kill some penguins for the organic polymer. But it's not too bad, because I found out my spino is actually insane at farming organic polymer. And I also farmed some crystal on the way home in the giant lava rock head island thing. I genuinely have no idea what it's called. Anyway, the last thing I need is cementing paste, so I spent the rest of the day looting beaver dams. I had to finish getting the last of the cementing paste I needed by crafting it in the morning of day 28, but I did manage to craft the S plus industrial forge right after it. Now, now, ladies, calm down. I know all of you want a picture with me because I have an industrial forge, but I'm too busy, I gotta stay on that grind. I flew out to the redwoods where there's a metric butt ton of metal, and of course I farmed it since I have an S plus industrial forge. I can do what I want now. Back to farming oil and some organic polymer on day 29 because I want to craft some vaults. I need these to try and organize myself a little bit since there are so many items in this mod. Anyway, when I returned to my base, I crafted another S plus smithy to put on my stone crafting area and then the two vaults. Now, the next structure I want to craft is a chemistry bench to make some more gunpowder and narcotic crafting easier. But the problem is I need 250 electronics to craft with it. And for that, I need 750 silica pearls. And the only place I know where to get some silica pearls on this map is the deep, dark, scary ocean. So my plan was to craft some scuba and then tame an ichthy to get me in and out as quickly as possible. But you see, the ocean is already scary enough in normal art, and there's some absolutely terrifying stuff in there now with the Pugnation mod. But instead of me telling you how I pulled off this heist, I'll just show you. Day 31, and since I successfully put off that heist, I now have a generator and a chemistry bench. And to top it all off, I tamed the glacial giga at the end of the day. I landed on the cliff, shot some trank darts at it, and put some instant kibble in it. And just like that, it was mine. Day 32, I logged back in to see a seeker bat attacking my base and my dinos. But don't worry, I quickly put it down. Anyway, after that, I threw out my newly tamed glacial giga and leveled a ton of melee into it. This thing is gonna be a beast. So after making a saddle for it, I decided to take it out on a little joyride around the center, decimating literally everything in my path. And after even leveling more melee into it, I was doing over 150,000 damage a bite. So ancient rexes aren't exactly a threat anymore. But moving on, I took out my bronto to try and find a better place to farm some berries, but to no avail. I was looking for one of those insane spots on some maps where there's an ungodly amount of bushes in one area, but I couldn't find any. So I just farmed some narco berries next to my base to turn into trank darts as I was running low after taming that giga. But to end off the day, I began crafting and placing some more stone pipes connecting my base to the river nearby. Day 33 started out very pleasant for me as a yellow drop was coming down nearby my base with some good flat. I did have to clear out the population of creatures surrounding it, but it was made super easy with my new giga. And I also discovered it had this snowstorm ability that deals 8,000 damage a tick to whatever dinos are inside of it. But moving on, I took my Argene Anki back out to that Skull Island rock thing, and I then proceeded to farm a ton of metal, obsidian, and crystal. I wanted to farm a bunch of these resources just so I could have them in supply if I needed them. And I put some of those resources a good use right away by crafting a fridge and expanding some of the cables on my platform. I wanted to make that part of the platform my hatching area, but instead of air conditioners, I wanted to craft an egg incubator. But I need some more electronics for it, so back to the ocean I go. I finished my pearl farming expedition on day 34, and I returned to my base and began turning the silica pearls and metal into electronics. I needed 250 to be exact, so I waited for them to craft, and I waited 
and I kept waiting. You see, electronics actually take forever to craft. I'm pretty sure I could have written a whole thesis on why electronic crafting takes too long. In the time, it only took to craft 250, but I digress. Anyway, I had my egg incubator at the end of the day, so it was all good, I guess. Getting back to farming tranks on day 35, I started by farming a bunch of wood with my theory to burn in the charcoal. And then quickly after that, I got to farming an unholy amount of spark powder. So after I got the wood burning and the spark powder crafting, I crafted a few more tranks and set out to look for a high-level male glacial giga to take. I figured if I have two of them and I breathe them, the baby's basically gonna be unstoppable. So anyway, I spent the rest of the day flying around the map looking for one to tame. The entirety of day 36 was also spent looking for one of these dudes. The problem wasn't finding high levels, it's just finding high levels that were male. And all the males I found would be around level 400, which is kind of butt cheeks. And day 37 was looking to be more of the same. I mainly flew around the floating island because that's where most of them spawn. And I also killed a few ancient rexes while I was searching just to get some more instant kibble. But honestly, I was starting to lose hope, but I finally spotted a level 728 male glacial giga. And you already know that guy was coming home with me. Anyway, I finished off the day by throwing my two gigas out back in my base and started breeding them. Day 38 started out with me not figuring out how to power my egg incubator. I mean, I knew how to power it with cables and all that, but I couldn't seem to get it just right. Anyway, after like five minutes of me struggling and crafting a ton of cables, I finally got it powered. And I also crafted myself a ramshackle flak chest piece to add to my armor. Anyway, since I finally got my egg incubator powered, that means I actually have to raise my baby giga now. So I did a quick meat run to feed it and I hatched my egg to actually get triplets. I don't know what the odds of that were, but I'll take it. So anyway, I spent the rest of the day raising the gigas, even after I imprinted them because they're the next step in line for me to progress. And yeah, yeah, I, I did the same thing for day 39 as well. I think gigas take around four arc days to raise, even with my insane raising rate, so I'm gonna get comfy here. But not too comfy, because you see, after that clip, my power shut off, and thus my whole PC. And when I logged back in, my character was gone, and as well as my mods. So yeah fun times. And this actually happened because I have my NASA PC and a giant air conditioner in my room to keep my room from becoming an inferno because my PC puts off so much heat. So anyway, sometimes when these two begin working too hard and sucking too much power from the wall, they overload the breaker and it all shuts off. So that's why I've crashed in pretty much every single one of my 100 days in the past 10 months. But yeah, I had to spend the rest of day 40 and all of day 41 rebuilding my base and respawning on my tames because I'm not losing all my progress like that. And I didn't spawn back everything in either. I I only spawned back in my Gigas, RG, Anki, and my PTs, I believe. But I still have to refarm all my gear and my resources once again. Day 42, I was back to playing like normal, starting with me going on a rampage to power level my Giga. And after that, I got to farming some stuff I need to make Trank Darts, because I still have to retame a bunch of creatures. But I did craft some more campfires at the end of the day, so I could, you know, stay alive. Day 43 was pretty much spent refarming all the important resources I needed, like Crystal, Obsidian, and Metal. And I first traveled to that Lava Head Island, and then to the Redwoods to farm the rest of the metal, and those rich nodes. But once I finally returned back to my base at the end of the day, I got my second Giga Egg hatching, since I still need to get an imprinted one to progress safely. Day 44, and I'm sad to say the egg hatched with only one baby this time. I guess I can't get that greedy, but I really wish I got triplets like last time. So anyway, I had to spend the rest of the day raising it, because it takes forever to raise. Day 45 was looking to be more the same. However, I took off on my imprinted PT I also raised. I was just looking for some drops just to get some gear that was better than primitive. I mean, I didn't have much luck I got a bit of kibble and a pretty bad long neck from a drop, but any long neck is good for now since I'm gonna need it to shoot trank darts out of. Day 46 started out with me farming some narco berries on the back of my ankylio, which is a pain I do not wish on anybody. It farms horrible amounts of berries and has the tiniest hitbox ever, so you have to go to every single bush individually. And after that, I farmed some spark powder with my anky, which wasn't nearly as bad. But I then spent the rest of the day waiting around for my giga to finally finish raising because it was almost done. The giga was finally done raising in the morning of day 47, and once again, let me know in the comments if you know where its name is from. Anyway, after that, I spent some time doing the usual power leveling it by mass murdering until I was doing almost 300k damage a bite. And after that, I went back out to the floating island and killed a few more ancient rexes so I could finally get some more ancient kibble because I still need to retame a few of my old creatures like a Bronto and the Therry. But on my way home, I looted a yellow drop with a ring that had another insane long neck rifle in it, so I was pretty much set to tame stuff now. And that's exactly what I plan to do. There's a level 532 Therry right outside of my base so I thought this would be the easiest tame of my life. But I'll just let you watch for yourself to see how it actually went.
Yeah, I got juked out by that fairy hard. Anyway, I got myself back and tamed the fairy without a problem once I actually hit the shot with the trank. So in the morning of day 48, I crafted my fairy a saddle and then farmed some wood to get it burning in the forge. And I also got some more gunpowder crafting and then turned them into some tranks. And after that, I knocked out and tamed a zombie Bronto that was nearby. But once again, I crafted its saddle and I realized that farming berries on it was less than ideal. You see, instead of doing its tail attack to farm berries, for some reason, the zombie Bronto has to do the ground smash attack, which takes forever. So I'm probably going to be taming a normal Bronto pretty soon. Day 49 started with me crafting a sickle and farming a bunch of fiber, because surprisingly enough, I could not keep a good stock of it. Anyways, after that, soon had arrived. And with that, I mean I pulled off quite possibly the quickest Bronto tame of all time, and it was a level 784 to top it all off. So then, I finally got to farming some berries normally, because that zombie Bronto was actually horrible at farming berries. But anyways, I didn't really do that much for the rest of the day. I just spent some time chilling on my base and crafting some more Trank Darns, since I just had to use all my day 50 and I decided to hop back on the progress train. I wanted to tame a primeval dino. These dinos are super strong and maybe even stronger than my glacial giga. But anyways, to tame one of these guys, I need a satiating nutrient which can be crafted from a primal meat you get from killing primal dinos and a primeval energy you get from killing a primeval dino. So I spent some time killing primal dinos and I wasn't getting any primal meat whatsoever. It turns out it's actually just a pretty rare drop, but I thought I was doing something wrong at the time. So anyways, I took a little break and I also used a Pugnacia Guidance information just to look at some dinos I either need to kill or tame in the future. Day 51 and I was feeling a little ballsy, so I decided to try and kill the third trike which was the boss that spawns around the world, but I quickly learned the hard way that I was not going to be able to kill it as it had a ton of health and did a ton of damage with its minions. I did manage to escape and return back to my base where I bred my glacial gigas again, but what I really needed to do is kill some of the primeval dinos so I can get some of their energy so can I have my own boss to tame. Now I know I'm kind of all over the place with this, but it's really just a combination of me not knowing what I'm doing and there being a lot to do. So yeah, bear with me here. Day 52, I found a primeval broodmother, which I quickly took down for its energy. It was actually very easy to kill because my giga is actually insane. And after that, I spent the rest of the day looking for more primevals to kill because I need all of their energies to craft the thing that makes me tame the boss. I actually want Spinebreaker, which I also believe I have to kill him to get the thing to craft him. It's just a whole big ordeal that I have no idea how I'm gonna do. But day 53, I actually managed to take down a primeval Dodo Rex and a Megapithecus, so there were some good additions to my energy collection. And after that, I returned to my base to discover that there were these red potions I had from killing these dinos. Turns out they're actually health potions, so I might be able to kill that trike with these, but I don't really know. But towards the end of the day, I set back out once again to take down some more primal dinos to hopefully get a primal meat. I still really wanted to tame a primeval dino, even though I'll probably have to kill it again to get its energy. Anyway, after enough killing, I finally got a primal meat at the end of the day. I had the satiated nutrient needed to tame a primeval on day 54, so obviously I spent the whole day looking for one. But as you might be able to tell by my tone, I did not find a single one. I didn't find a single one either on day 55 this is not looking good. But day 56 was looking a little more interesting though, because I tried to kill the third trike again. But even with these health potions, I was losing too much health, so I just had to abort. Maybe if I level some health into my Giga, I'll be able to take it down, but I'm really stuck in a pickle here. So anyway, I managed to take down a Primeval Indominus Rex and a Primeval Phoenix at the end of the day. I swam and walked home with my Glacial Giga in the morning of day 57, and for some reason these dudes can actually swim pretty fast. But now the only Primeval bosses I have left to kill is the Dodo Wyvern and the dragon and the manticore. So honestly, it doesn't seem too bad. I'm just gonna have to spend some time flying around and looking for these dudes until they spawn in. But it didn't take long for me to find a manticore just straight chilling in the air. I thought it was glitched out and maybe I'd just be able to kill it as it floats there, so I decided to bite it with my bird to test my hypothesis. Yeah, so it wasn't stuck. But with enough skillful maneuvers, I was able to get it down to the ground and kill it with my glacial giga. Anyway, I only need to kill two more primevals now. But instead, I return to my base towards the end of the day to repair my flak. But on day 59, my luck kept going because I found the dragon I need to kill. Now this dude is actually kind of scary to kill because he has a fire breath attack that will actually shred my giga. And to make it even better, he's flying right towards me. Oh my god. No worries though, I managed to throw out my giga and kill him without breaking a sweat. Anyway, I spent the rest of the day searching for a dodo wyvern around the map. But day 60, I decided to take a break from searching and the killing of primeval. Instead, I wanted to craft some more of these health potions because once I have all the energies, I need to kill the spine breaker to get a spine so I can tame one myself. And that's gonna be a fight where I'm gonna 
need a bunch of health potions. But to craft the health potions, you need 5 cooked pine meat, 20 rare flowers, and 50 stimulants. So yeah, it's not exactly a cheap potion. Anyway, I wanted to first make an industrial grill to mass cook the prime meat, but I needed oil, so I flew out to the iceberg and got some with a little manual labor. So when I returned back to my base, I placed the grill and then set out once again to farm some prime meat. But instead, I came across a dodo wyvern at the volcano island. And for some reason, this one was really dumb and decided to land right before I attacked it, so it was very easy to kill and gave some decent prime meat as well. Anyway, I spent the rest of the day cooking the prime meat and making spark powder to make stimulants. Day 61, and I now need to figure out how to get some rare flowers. As I said, I don't know too much about the center, but I'm pretty sure there is no good way to get the rare flowers. So I first tried taking my theory out to the swamp and seeing if there were any bushes I could pick that would give some of the blue flowers, but to no avail. So after that, I tried the classic beaver dam robberies, but that was also super inconsistent. So instead, I turned to brute force on day 62. Turns out primal dinos actually drop some rare flowers and mushrooms when you kill them, so I spent the whole day circling the swamp and killing primals with my giga. I had about 25 healing potions in the morning of day 63, but with a little more stimulant farming with my bronto, I was able to whip up another six of the red potions a few minutes later. So now I should be ready to fight the spinebreaker to the best of my ability. But it's at this point where I remembered a mod I had installed before I started playing this 100 days, the upgrade station. You see, I've used this mod before, but it's been a while. So a quick explanation is, if you put a saddle in the upgrade station as well as some of the resources required to make the saddle, you can upgrade it so it has better armor. So I spent the rest of the day doing that to the Giga saddle. And eventually I got the saddle up to the Mastercraft level, but I don't know if this will actually do anything. The Spinebreaker might just ignore the saddle armor, but either way, this boss fight is still going to be very hard. But now, day 64, the search begins for a Spinebreaker. But after only 10 minutes of searching, one spawned in right in front of me in the swamp. So before I knew it, I was throwing out my Giga and rushing the Spinebreaker. My strategy was to get a few bites in and then back up and occasionally use health potions when I needed them. But this dude was doing a lot of damage. So I decided to cheese it. I found the cliff where it couldn't reach me and I could bite it. And it was working perfectly, but I had to back up every 15 seconds to avoid his death ball, but I really don't care, this is working. But I don't know if you have noticed it by now, but this dude started out with 144 million health. So it took me well into day 65 to kill him from the sheer amount of health he had. But anyway, once I finally did kill him, I got his spine and this weird tech chest piece that had an insane amount of armor and no durability, which is actually really nice. But I then spent the rest of the day farming narcotics and trank darts because I now have to tame a prime evil and then use the sacrifice I'm gonna craft to tame my own spine breaker. Day 66 and I knocked down and tamed the primeval broodmother that had once again spawned in the swamp. And it was super easy because I was able to hover over it with my tech chest piece. And once I finally returned to my base, I crafted the sacrifice and used it on my own broodmother. And let's just say I had a field day for the rest of the day, leveling up my new spine breaker. I returned to my base on the morning of day 67 from the hunting party with my spine breaker. And it's at this point I saw what I needed to craft for the ascension arena. I need the ascension arena to kill all the ascension bosses and to beat the mod. But for some reason, it requires resources like a giant smithy. That includes 5,000 metal ingots, so I think you can see where I'm going with this. I went back to the redwoods to farm a ton of metal, so hopefully I never have to farm it again for the rest of these 100 days and to craft the ascension arena. But when I was farming it, I got attacked by a primal basilisk, which didn't kill me or my tames, but it knocked both my RG and my Ankleo unconscious. So I had to spend the rest of the day waiting for these two to quit sleeping on the job and to wake up. Day 68. Yeah, my tames were both still unconscious. Day 69, both of my tames were finally up and moving. So I finished farming all the metal I could where I would have over 5,000 plus metal ingots. Anyways, I then flew back to my base and transferred all the metal into my forge. But before the day ended, I flew back out to the iceberg by the green obelisk and farmed some more oil to make some more gas to keep my base up and running. Day 70, and I've tamed the trike because I don't have one. If you remember, mine all got deleted about 30 days ago and I'm still salty about it. Anyway, I needed the trike to farm me some stone because they can do that for some reason. But once I had it, I didn't even farm any. I just repaired my armor at the end of the day. Day 71 is where things start to get a little weird. You see, to kill the ascension bosses, I'm gonna need an army of spine breakers. Or just more than one of them. So after doing a little bit of research, I found out about a mutator that will allow my spine breaker to lay fertilized eggs, which I can hatch. But the problem is I have to craft a tech replicator to craft these, which is very expensive. But the most problematic resource required to craft a tech replicator is the black pearls. And I know some dinos give black pearls when you kill them in this mod, but I couldn't remember which one. So for the rest of the day, I went out to the floating island and started killing literally everything. Bosses, regular dinos, it didn't really matter. And I even made my way into the water below the island, but I couldn't find anything 
anything that would give me black pearls when I kill it. Day 72, I returned to my base and crafted an S plus crafting station so I can try and pull all my resources, see exactly what I needed to craft a replicator. And yep, those black pearls are still gonna be a pain. But first, let me take care of that polymer. I remembered when I had a Confligerant Spino before it got deleted over 30 days ago, but I also remembered that it was very good at farming organic polymer from penguins. So I took a little journey into the swamp and tamed one with some instant kibble. And I then returned to my base and made a saddle for it before going back out to the iceberg and farming all the organic polymer I could ever dream of. I finished farming organic polymer on day 73. More importantly, I still didn't know how I was going to get those black pearls. So I spent most of the day researching on my other monitor on how to get black pearls on the center. But all I came up with was killing Tussos in the ocean. So at the end of the day, I crafted myself some scuba and set out to the ocean with my spine breaker to hopefully get some black pearls. Day 74 consisted of purely me just swimming around the ocean and killing squids occasionally when I found them. It was pretty boring, but I got enough for the few things I needed to craft by the end of the day. Day 75 and I crafted and placed my new S plus tech replicator. Anyway, I crafted a mutator and then got back to work on trying to figure out how this thing actually did work. It would send out pulses that I thought would make my spine breaker lay an egg, but it wasn't working. But that's when I spotted the spino had a radiation level at 50% full. So me being me, I thought I needed to have two of these mutators and pulse both of them at the same time to get the spino back to full radiation. So I crafted another mutator, but it didn't work. That's when I was informed I first needed to clone my spine breaker, then change its gender, and then make the mutator able to breed them. So I still have a lot of work to do, and I need to make this cloning chamber. So day 67, I started to farm some more polymer with my conflicker and spine. And after a little more work, I had my pugnacia cloning chamber. But that's when I saw I needed over 59,000 element shards to clone my spine breaker. And that's way more element than I currently have, so I need to figure out how to get some more element. Day 77, and I figured out how to get some more element. I'm gonna kill another spine breaker with my spine breaker. Now, I thought this would be even easier than with my Giga because spine breakers are supposed to be way stronger, but this took even longer than before. I went back to the same cliff area as I'd done last time, but I had to shoot it to kill it because I couldn't find a close enough spot to be safe and bite it at the same time. So anyway, the rest of day 77 and the first half of day 78 was spent killing this dude. That was probably one of the biggest regrets of my life. But it was worth it, I guess, because when I returned back to my base, I crafted up all the shards I needed to clone the spine breaker, which only took 15 seconds. And for the rest of the day, I tried to figure out why the mutator wasn't changing the clone's gender to female. I needed to be female so they can breed, obviously, but it was not working. Day 79, I finally figured out how to change the gender, and I now have a breeding pair of spine breakers. But well, that means it's time to spend the next five days breeding and raising these dudes so I have a boss fighting army. <laughs> The entirety of day 84 and about half of day 85 was spent leveling my spine breakers so that they would actually be strong. And I got most of them to where they had over a million health and did some decent damage. Anyway, for the rest of day 85, I started grinding my way to make the ascension arena. And I farmed stone with my trike, wood with my theory, and metal with my ankleo. I had pretty much everything I needed to make the ascension arena on day 86. I just had to wait for the metal to smell, which honestly takes a while even in the industrial forge, but I had it by the end of the day. Day 87, and I was ready to go. I flew up to the island that I had spawned on and threw out my army. I thought as soon as I placed the ascension arena, a boss would spawn that I'd have to kill. But I quickly learned after placing it, I need other tributes to actually spawn the bosses inside the arena. So I had to demolish the arena that didn't even give me it back, so I'll have to re-farm for it all over again. Yeah, that was a pretty big financial loss. I'm gonna go cry in that corner over there. Day 88, I was trying to figure out how to get the tributes for the final ascension bosses anywhere. I looked at the engrams and they weren't there. And I couldn't find where to get them on any wikis online. But after rewatching the video file of me looking into the ascension arena to summon the bosses i realized that you have to kill the brood mother which can be summoned by 1500 elements the brood mother will then drop what you need to summon the megapithecus and the megapithecus will do the same and so on so i now need to figure out how to get 1500 element because i only have just over 100 but i know exactly how i'm gonna do it. i need to kill bosses like a lot of them. Not the little primeval bosses, the big ones with millions of health. But with my Spinebreaker army, it should be pretty easy. So that's exactly what I did up until day 93. But instead of me telling you about it, I'll just show you.
well day 94 and I now have all of element I need to summon the first ascension boss but I now have to recraft the arena and as you can see I need metal so back out to the redwoods I went to refarm even more metal for the last time and once I returned to my base I farmed the remaining wood I needed as well as the stone I needed in the morning of day 95 but it's now time to wait for the 3000 metal I need to smell and even with an industrial forge it still takes a while like it wasn't even all done smelting until day 98 and I literally just stood there for three days because I have nothing else to do because I'm about to beat the mod. Day 98 and as you guessed it it's time for me to start fighting the bosses since I have to fight around six or seven and I can fight these guys all in a row because of the fast pugnacia healing so I had my army all thrown out and even with a couple of glacial gigas I expect to die soon but whatever. Anyway it's time to place that ascension arena and get down to fighting.